What's up guys, Can of Westwood Table Soccer here and welcome back to the Westwood Table Soccer YouTube channel and welcome back to another episode of Talking Complete Kit. In this episode we're going to be looking at the skin tone painting on the Super Footy figures. Now remember back in the original Super Footy episode we talked about painting those single colour figures. Stay tuned because we have put some skin tones on those two. The results, I'll leave it up to you guys. Let me know what you guys think. But that's what we are doing in this episode. If you enjoy this video, guys, please smash that like button. If you haven't already, there's a subscribe button down on this side of the screen. So let's take a look at our super footy figures. All right, so here we have a super footy figure. Now we've got this last white plastic super footy figure up first because we're going to do him first. Then what we'll do is we'll probably do the sky blue and we'll do the blue or the red, and we'll try and put skin on them. Um, we're gonna do this guy again with the Mat 61. What we might do with the Sky Blue fella is potentially use the Mat 98. And if we're gonna do that, let's do a yellow as well in the normal skin tone color, just to see how they all go on. Um, and we'll go from there. So, Super Footies are a very, very shiny plastic. Now, Super Footies are one of those figures that when I've painted them before, I don't have trouble with matte enamels, but I do have a few issues when painting acrylic on these. It's not exclusive to these, but as these guys are as shiny finish as they are, when using acrylic paint on these, they do struggle for a little bit of key, a little bit of something to grab onto, and that's why I think a lot of people that paint on these will use primer i don't prime but i'm not using acrylic paint if you are using solely acrylic paint a light spray primer might be a good option just to try and create a little key be very very careful with the spray you don't want too much have to start filling in the mold lines and it'll stick especially your sort of bridge gaps especially in between arms and in between legs so Without any more chit chat, let's have a look at getting some matte enamel on this guy. Now, the first thing you'll notice in particular, and it'll become more obvious in a minute, is there's a lot less leg to paint on a super footy figure. The stocks come up quite high, the shorts are quite long, there's a lot less leg. So, your gap clearance in between is a lot smaller. But again, no issues really with painting these guys. The mold lines are okay. It kind of has a translucence to it, super fruity white plastic, um, which can make it a bit tricky when leaving negative white space, but we'll kind of try and come on to that in a later video. But just something I thought of just then, they do have a really sort of translucent finish to the plastic um, that the other figures don't, especially the LPMs, they definitely don't. They're a very sort of matte finished plastic which I like personally I prefer the matte finish in terms of mold lines around the back they do continue to be quite strong so it's not as difficult to bring that sock line round they do have a really nice sort of mold line that does continue all the way around and you can see straight off there the difference if we just bring one of the Zwego guys back preferably one that I haven't painted already and have a little look at the difference the sort of leg area on the heavyweight style figure is almost double probably maybe even a little bit more in terms of the actual surface area that you have to paint so let's get this second one finished and as i said i usually i don't know why i always do this i always start around the back and i can do that on a super footy because the mold lines are strong they're good solid mold lines for these guys so that's good i'm happy with that um Coming round, again, in terms of difficulty to paint, not that hard. Um, they've got a lot less surface area to paint, which is a bit of a brucey bonus. Um, you can definitely get through the skin process on these guys a little bit quicker. But because they have less surface area, you do have to be a little bit more careful. The other little thing to mention here is actually in terms of the gap underneath the legs. Now, you can see here, hopefully, that there is still white plastic left where his white shorts should be. On a Zwego, you get the same thing that you get on pretty much everyone else. And actually, that the flesh line joins together under the legs. On the Super Footies, that isn't the case. You do get a clear difference between leg and short. So that's a little brutey bonus for those as well. 
it does just mean that you do have to paint your color a lot better in and around under the legs. But we'll come onto that when we get onto the color episodes. What I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to make him short sleeve. So the great thing about Super Footies is there's no mold lines pretty much anywhere on the shirt whatsoever. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to start down the bottom and I'm going to bring my paint up flat brush layout. You would have seen us do this in the final painting academy video. So if I remember, I will blast that episode up onto a card at the top. So if you want to go back and have a little look at this and creating short sleeves in a bit more detail, I do cover it, like I say, in more detail on a Santiago type two figure to so the classic heavyweight replica. It is covered on there. Now again, Creating a short sleeve figure on these guys is easy. It's an absolute dream because they're so smooth. The mold lines, there's not a lot of plastic and excess little mold lines to get around. It's all about just having a rough idea of how high you want to take that flesh line up, which is quite simply easy once you've been doing it as many times as I have. But you kind of have a rough idea of how long a short sleeve shirt should be. And what you want, as I mentioned it before, is you want to do a diagonal cut across his arm. If you went for a straight cut here, his sleeve would look ridiculous. Um, we'll make this guy a round neck. Um, it's nice and easy. Hairlines, they don't really have any on super footies. So it's your hair is all sort of created by the paint. And in terms of creating his round neck again, it does have a very, very faint sort of mold line. In them, but again, if you just line up along the bottom of his chin and sweep round, you'll create a lovely round neck anyway. And we're going to leave this guy as a round neck. If we need to change him later on, it's not an issue. We can do that and pretty much just throw skin anywhere on his head where you want it because you're going to paint over it with a hair color anyway. And that is that. So that is painting a super footy figure with short sleeves um, in the standard 61 flesh. We've got another guy. Pretty much the same over here on a Santiago Spitfire. Um, another one here on a Spitfire base in the darker skin tone so you can see what that's like. We've got a couple to be fair in there and in there. Um, we also have, a slide these guys back, we've got this fella with sort of a three quarter length for sleeve. So we've made the hands come up a little bit higher just to try and do something a little bit different. As I said, because super footies don't have a mold line you have the flexibility to take them sleeve lines wherever you want so if you've just got your sleeves pulled up a little bit you might be able to do that with this sort of figure gives you that freedom um have i got any that have duh, 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 a v-neck we've got one here who's v-necked um just a very very slight v-neck very very small v-neck created there um short sleeves again short sleeve round. So we've got loads and loads of these guys done in different skin tones. You can see what they come out like here. So loads of different types of, of figures, really, really easy to paint. Very, very smooth super footies. Um, so let's have a little look then, a little bonus look at doing some of these colored figures. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna clear these guys out of the way. What I'm probably gonna do is do one light colored figure with a light colored flesh and then do the dark ones, the dark colored plastics. Um, let's do one in each again. I think it's gonna be difficult, but we're gonna give it a bash. Okay, so right now then in front of me, we've got some more super footy figures, um, but in the colored plastic. What we're gonna do with these two guys is use Mat 61, um, which we've got here. I reckon it might work on this guy. It might do an okay job on the light blue, which is a really, really nice light blue, by the way. How nice is that? Um, and then we're gonna try one on the dark blue guy as well. Um, I think it's gonna be an issue, um, especially on this guy. I don't know how it's gonna turn out on this one, but we will, you know, we'll endeavor to find out. In terms of the molds on these guys, pretty clean, very, very similar to the other super footies as you'd expect i'm assuming they're probably the same mold but because they're a different style plastic i think personally you can see the mold lines a little bit better on the darker colored plastics and you can on the plain white i said that white has kind of a translucent -y 
feel about it. But anyway, let's have a look. We're going to do this dark blue fella first, and I've got no idea what's going to happen. I'm not expecting great results, especially with the light coloured skin tone on this guy. It might be a few coats to make it work, but let's give it a bash to see how it comes out. In terms of how the paint goes on, I hate it already. I absolutely hate it. It looks awful, but I will endeavour to continue. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with a light coat on this one. And what I'll probably do maybe later on in the video is I'll come back and I would have done it off camera. I'm not going to show you guys me painting another layer on it, but I will go and do it and then show you guys later on in the video how it comes out. Um, like I said, these things I'm not sure are designed to be painted. I'm pretty sure they're not. But hey, we're a painting channel. I'm an artiste. Let's give it a bash and see if we can make it work. It does look... If I reckon if I can get enough layers on this, this will look good. If I can get that blue shadowy undertone not to come through, I think it could look quite nice because the actual the blue colour is really nice. Um, so it's not been it's not terrible. I'm only going to make him short sleeve though. I'm not messing around trying to get long sleeve up there. So let's. I tell you what we'll do. Let's give him some three quarter arms because I showed you that just a minute ago. So what we'll do is we'll take that to about there. Diagonal cut it up. As I said, in terms of the actual blue plastic colour, it's really nice. And obviously you've got no danger then of you chipping that blue colour because it's not going to come off because that's what colour the plastic is. So it has advantages, but like I say, I do not think these things are designed to be painted. Um, but we're going to give, like I said, we're giving him a bash. It was something that I've asked you guys to let me know on. You guys said you wanted to try and see me do it. So... We're giving it a go. In terms of how the paint goes on this colour plastic, it feels a little bit more slidey. I don't know, that's, that's not really a great way of describing it, but it doesn't feel like it's sticking to the plastic as well as it does on the white. Um, so we're getting a lot of that shadow come through, but as I said, I think a lot of that is because we're trying to cover a very, very light colour or very, very dark colour rather, with a very, very light colour. We might even, you know, be able to get our second coat over this now if we're clever. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So we're going to just try, and just where you can really see that heavy blue coming through, I'm just going to try and get a little bit more of a solid layer of paint there so that we might be able to get this guy looking good already. No, know what, I'm actually quite surprised. This is actually working not that bad. I reckon we could get a nice finish on this, which leads, which bodes well, potentially, especially for the light blue one. I think he'll be pretty good too. How you're going to get other colours on this, you are pretty much limited to doing a mostly blue kit with this, for sure. Um, you can probably get some detailing done in some other colours, and I'll probably... I say I don't even know what team I'm going to do this into yet. I haven't really thought about that for any of them. Um, we could just leave him all blue. And maybe just do like a boring sort of Chelsea maybe. But then they've got, they should in theory have white socks. I would not want to be painting white onto this. So if you ever were going to get one of these figures in, if you're going to paint white on it, I would say start from a white figure. I would definitely say don't be attempting to get any sort of, I was trying to paint them shorts white for example, absolutely ridiculous, it would take so many layers that you would lose all definition and detail. So what we're going to do, I mean <laughs> he actually looks okay, except he's got blue hair which is a bit mental, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flick him to the side quickly, bring our light blue geezer in and let's get straight onto him. Um, I'm thinking that this is going to turn out better than the dark blue um, because it's a lighter paint on a lighter plastic. So it should, in theory, go on about the same. Um, you will still get some shadowing coming through, but as we've already shown on our darker figure there, that can be taken away very, very easy. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to time lapse through this guy because he's pretty much the same.
Okay, um, let's talk about that. Straight off the bat, it felt wrong. Um, painting um, a skin tone onto already coloured plastic just didn't feel right. Um, in terms of how the paint went on, it felt like it was going on a lot more translucent and a lot more, I don't know, watery. Like the plastic felt a little bit more slippery and it wasn't accepting and the paint wasn't sticking as easily as it does on the white plastic um but overall like leaving it a couple of minutes and then putting like a second layer over especially where that shadowing comes through actually gave us some pretty good results we've done this guy in a three-quarter sleeve this guy in a short sleeve we've left them both round necked um they actually look okay i mean with this guy here you're not going to get a lot of choices about what other colors that you use on him um this one you've got a little bit more free reign but it's still going to be difficult so i'm not 100 sure what we're going to do maybe you could do like um what is it a 191 man city type vibe with this one maybe a chelsea or a modern day maybe even like a leicester that wear all blue it's not going to be easy getting details onto these figures um with any sort of paint but as i said they turned out sort of okay what i'm going to do i'll do this off camera is i'll do the red and the yellow guy in the darker skin tones there's no point showing you guys that because you've already seen us do the super footy figures so what i'll do is i'll do that off camera okay so off camera there we just finished off and added on a few extra little coats of paint to those matte 61 figures on the left there and we also painted the skin tones in matte 98 on the red and the yellow figure um the darker skin tone definitely goes on a lot easier and there was a lot less layers required that's a single coat of matte 98 paint on those guys and we've done a short sleeve and a long sleeve again i think the yellow guy looks a little bit like marcos senna from villarreal from back in the day so probably what i'm going to do that kit as the others i'm not 100 percent sure what to do with them um in terms of what colors you can add on that dark blue is going to be a bit of a problem in terms of what color to add to that we could maybe try for like a boca juniors -y type vibe not really sure um be difficult to get a color a yellow to go over that and look clean light blue again not sure maybe like a 191 man city sort of vibe uh the red guy in the middle again maybe like a liverpool not really sure and i just got the green guy on the end to show like a comparison that actually these figures for me look a hundred percent better even with just the skin tone added on um, than they do all as one single color just makes everything look more realistic makes them look really nice the colors themselves are absolutely beautiful i love the, t the shades of the yellows and the blues look really really good but in terms of painting them not ideal but that is what they look like there um, when all the paint has been added on that's the end of this video then as we've looked at our super footy figures what do you guys think of those single color figures now personally i think they look way way better with skin tones added but i'm not 100 percent sure about what i'm going to paint them into what kits i'm going to put on them but that is that for this one over this side we've got the complete tail list for this series on this side we've got the original super footy video if you haven't seen it already right smack in the middle of the screen we have got a subscribe button if you haven't already hope you guys have enjoyed it until the next one stay safe